wondering whether um, V, you could you could invite Alan in. I, I met a photographer who you're going to enjoy called Alan Burles, who is a um, we met at a school that we both mentor at, which is called the here he is, Alan Burles. Alan Burles. Uh, have we got canned applause? No, we haven't. But we can do this. We can go. He is here. He is. There we are. He's come all this way. So I met Alan um, at a school that we both mentor at, which is called the School, school for Communication Arts, SCA2. Maybe somebody be kind enough to put uh, some deets in the, in the chat column there, just because it's a school for young creatives to get them to communicate and connect in meaningful ways um, with the rest of the world. And I met Alan, and there was a kind of, um, you know, sometimes you recognize a member of your tribe. I think you know, we're getting very tribal these days, but there is something about kinship and going, oh, there was something about the way that Alan, um, just in a sense, this was somebody who held his, he was very passionate about his art and photography, but held it very lightly. And we started looking at some of the images that Alan has uh, created, and we'll look at some together. But I think more than anyone I've met, um, Alan is somebody that can make good on the on the strap line of the book that we've got, there's my book, and it says on the front here, I just happen to have a copy <laughs> to hand, but it says, and, and um, Vanessa and I slaved over this one, find wonder in the everyday, every day. And I think this man does that. Alan Burns, welcome to the World Wide Wonder. What, how would you describe your photography? What is it that you do? Can I just say that you mentioned you said that I resonated with you, but it was the other way around, Mr. Sure, you came and gave a talk at the school, um, which is for, as you say, you didn't even know they were creative sometimes. They just enroll to find a year later, wow, I'm creative. So it's <laughs> a great thing. Um, but you gave a talk, and I was the one going, wow, David Pearl, I resonate with you, sir. So thank you very much for that. So but, there'll be yeah. some mutual admiration going on here for the next 45 minutes. But anyway, yeah. uh, it, it's, it, it, I think it's when you both feel you're the beneficiary, there's something really good. So, Alan, tell me, tell me, you, you hold it lightly, but you're, you're a magician. Tell us a bit about your photography, and then maybe we will look at some. Um, so, my photography was probably inspired by being in advertising, discovering these great photographers back in the day and presently um, who do who just capture the world. It used to be called reportage. It's now more or less called street photography. Um, but they just capture life around them. Um, and I decided at the age of 22 or whatever, as I spent half my salary, half my month's salary at Saatchi and Saatchi to, uh, on a little camera. And it was going to go with me everywhere, and it still does to this day. And I won't say how many years ago that was, but it, yeah, it still happens. So I just carry a camera everywhere, and uh, that comes out and works with street wisdom because it reminds you always that there's something to see. Um, and I, I, I had this moment where... Um, a Chinese magazine weirdly got in touch and said, can we feature your work? And they did, and they wrote it all in Mandarin. And then a friend went and worked in China, so I got it translated. And one of the lines was, um, sometimes it requires your eyes to listen to the jokes he's telling you. That's beautiful. Which was just stunning. Oh, that's wonderful. So I now call, if, if I have to describe how I work, I call it listening with my eyes. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, and we're gonna, let's look at some. Let's look at some. Well, one of the things that I think is really interesting before we look at any images, Nick, I know is rushing around to, to load it up to the machine. But is is that is that while you're laughing, you're learning. There's something about oh, art that needs to be serious. I remember John Cleese saying, "Don't mix serious and sombre." And one of the things I love about your work is is very witty, and that for me makes it deeper less than less deep. Let's have no, a that's a lovely thing minutes. to say. And there is a, I think there's an exhibition at the moment um, in, in the Whitechapel Gallery or somewhere, and it, the, the title is Life is More Important Than Art. Yeah. And I'd love to have thought of that myself, mm -hmm. because that's really what I'm about. Um, well, here's some yeah. life. Yeah, so here's some life. You're just in a supermarket, and everyone's stepping around a puddle, and I stop and take the photograph of the puddle. Because... Everything is in relation to something else, and because of my background being art and, and friends introducing me to abstract art back in the day when I was at art school, so I'm just seeing an, a composition there and a moment there, and, it, and, it's before, and I'm rushing to get it before it's cleared up, of course. <laughs> I do not want it touched. But I just think that... You want the mess. You want the mess. Just the shape is so beautiful, and the milk going one colour on the mat 
and another, and back to creamy white on the floor. Yes. It's just this magical play in my eyes. And what happens is, we were talking about listening with my eyes. That comes from, we don't um, try to listen. We just listen. Hearing comes to us. There's no grasping at it. But looking, we grasp sometimes. And so listening with your eyes is just walking around and letting the world come to you. I love it. If I had a bell, I do actually have a bell somewhere, but I, a, a little bomb went off in my head. I'm going to listen with my eyes. Actually, we should probably write that down. There are, somebody in the studio is writing down uh, these insights, but I think it's beautiful. Let's, have a, let's, have, let's keep looking through, if that's okay. We sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, through. yeah. As well. And what do we think of rubbish on the street? We disregard it. We walk past it. We go, what a mess. But occasionally, it does something different that makes you go, just makes you reassess it. And I have a project called Accidental Sculptures, and that is an accidental sculpture. If you walked into an art gallery and turned left and that was against the wall in the Sartre Gallery, you'd go, wow, <laughs> somebody's had a great idea there. But there it is in real life. So capture it. I mean, it's slightly different to street wisdom where people go out with a question. This is more about just actually letting the, your awareness see the world around you as it is. But you do select, don't you, Alan? You're not just shooting, I don't know how many shots you take, but something in you goes, ah, that's the That's shot. right, absolutely. And if I do a workshop or something like that, <clears throat> what I say to people is, you walk, as we walk around, as we all walk around, we have what I call life moments. But maybe just seeing a rubbish bag that's pink and some you know, blue inside, it's just a life moment. And then you can get your, your camera can then get involved and take the photograph. But without the life moment, you won't have a photograph. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Let's, let's take another look. By the way, yeah, caption competitions also work. Anyone <laughs> wants to give captions, put, yeah. them, in, put them in the chat. That would be yeah. great. I love this. This hasn't, moved. this hasn't moved for, what, three years since it was put up. But there's tension there every day. For me, there's a tug of war going on or something. It just looks so human, even though there's just a still life, so to speak. It's my dream. It's my dream. Exactly, it's my dream. exactly. Beautiful. So I giggle a lot. It makes you know, it's a great help. Yeah. Tug of love. Yeah. yeah. That's, Next. That's yeah. Actually, do you caption your? Uh, I don't pictures? caption them. Don't. I don't want to because I want if the for me if the picture doesn't speak for itself, um, then it isn't working. It's a bit to do with my background of ideas and stuff in, in uh, advertising, but um, I, don't, I don't want to have to put a, a, a title there. My mum would love me to. <laughs> yes, darling. Because that's, that's her era, is, uh, is captions. But I don't it's, it's, funny, it's funny, I notice that when I go around art goes, I will find myself looking for the caption because my brain likes to know what's going on. And that's why I think also with Street Wisdom, and, and well, I wonder, it's like you're taking, we say, take your. Let your feet take your brain for a walk. And the brain just needs to calm down and not know for a moment. And Absolutely. Stuff All about out. not knowing. Yeah. It really is. That's what the great thing about our listening is. That it, we, it, I, did a, I do a little um, exercise, which is just letting, I call it letting the listening go out. So it's not pulling anything in. It's letting, and you just listen for the most faint, just let the faintest sound in the distance come. And it's sort of one minute of that before you go and do anything else. And you just come back to yourself. Talk about okay. letting the listening out. I bet Nick's saying it, we're, wa we're waving the microphone around a bit much. Are we still are we? getting? Are we getting Alan? Are we getting the listening in? Oh, we're good. Good. Let's good. let's let's be your brain. Let's yeah. click on a little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. So you know, we're driving along, and suddenly your window, your passenger window, frames a a piece of art when somebody's broken their shop window. Yeah. And you just, you know, you either. You, you, I would have seen that and quite happily moved on, going, what a beautiful moment. Yes. But I happened to have a camera there. I was at a traffic light. Yes. So, dear, you know, DBLA, it was all safe. Um, yeah, so you just get a, you get a lovely picture out of it. There's an exercise that I learned actually from David, who you met earlier on on the, on the call, um, which, is, which is basically you close your eyes, you're in a room, and if someone holds your hand, and they are the Clark. photographer. And your head is the camera. You have your eyes closed. And when they squeeze your hand, you blink your eyes just for a second so that light falls mm -hmm. on the retina. And we use this in street wisdom as an as a exercise called human camera. But that idea of just selecting one split second, somehow you see the colors, you see the composition in a way that you don't when you're being constant. I love that because there's no there's no time to interpret it, yeah. to pass judgment on it. And all that liking and disliking and color, it, it's irrelevant when you are seeing as it is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, we just bring so much judgment into it. Um, and, and that means we disregard stuff because we've, we've classified it and moved on. 
don't if you can unclassify the world. It's become so fresh. I mean, that means you can sit in a, a dentist's waiting room for 30 minutes and not be bored because it's fresh, everything you're seeing, and there's relationships between all the objects and yeah. stuff. I mean, I think there's some more photographs in here that yeah, show. Let's, yeah. let's, let's keep on through. This. So this is a relationship between green tables and their shadows yeah. in, you know, in, in hot Malta. And I loved it that the, pav the paving stones were burning my eyes. But the magic of the two, uh, the shadows and the tables together. It's like a dance. It's like a dance, absolutely. And you see it, you know, it actually looks lovely on this screen, David, where the, the size <laughs> really helps bring it to life, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so beautiful. Thank what you. Have we got next? next. Yeah. And there's my waiting room. Yes. So that's a hospital. Yes. And you're just looking out of the door, waiting for your appointment. But because I've got a camera around me and I know that yes. the, 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 a photograph is possible anywhere, I just see this abstract. And it's all, you know, my, my history of art mate up in Manchester would, would, who, who trained me in abstract art would be thrilled with that because yeah. I've seen something that is actually very mundane. But the little touch in that is that the tape goes over one side and goes under the, the other. other. I was That's the a tiny it, little touch in it. Looks, very woven, doesn't it? Yeah. It's very interesting. And it's a beautiful composition. It probably wasn't me. It was probably that yeah. I had to do that to cut the walls out. It, I'm guessing you don't have your camera on you the whole time. The whole time. Well, bath and... I don't know no, no, not a bath. No, no, but, thanks. No, yeah. My <laughs> question was going to be... And this is... I often think street wisdom is a... It's like a gear in your mind. It's, it's a... Once you've had an experience of street wisdom, it's something you can... I said you fire off in... It's like an optional colour. I can push a street wisdom button in my mind and suddenly be reading the world around you differently. Is that the same with you? Is there a, is there a photography you that goes, okay, now look, and is that different than the everyday hour? The, um, not really, right. no. Um, I take it everywhere, and if I'm caught up in my thoughts and I'm not whatever, <coughs> then so be it. Yeah. Um, but it goes with me everywhere because life doesn't turn off because you put your camera away. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you just doesn't. That sounds like someone should have said that. Yeah. <laughs> it was said here, people. Alan Burles, 29th of uh, September 2023. Life doesn't go. It doesn't stop, stop because you put your camera away. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Let's have another. Thank let's have another few. You see. Yeah. So we're in our house, we're a bit lazy with the tea bags sometimes, yes. and they go in the in the in the the plastic bowl so that we don't chip the china bowl underneath. And water collects and makes a most beautiful, well, for me, you know, what yeah. an elegant <laughs> little dribble of tea that is. Yes. Um, and I just found there's beauty in it, so I took it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the everyday can be so beautiful. Yes. So often. It's inspiring. It's inspiring. And given that we carry with us these devices, now we have cameras in this is kind of no excuse not to do it. If, if you're interested, of course, yeah. What would yeah. you feel about the fact that everybody's snapping? everything all the time. Well, I think it's fantastic, really. Yeah. Um, but pay attention to it. Yeah. See what you've done. Don't just disregard it. I yeah. think, you know, well, it depends on your attitude to photography. Um, it, it's great, I think, if you can pick yourself up, you know, uh, be aware that you've done it and and therefore have taken care about yeah. it. You know, love yeah. it. Yeah. Love it, I suppose. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Again, I love it when we see messes on the street that you just see people walk past and never look at. But if you just look... I mean, that is a composition. The, the white bits at the front are taking our eye into the mess of the van. Yes. There, are, there are lines everywhere as a V taking our eye further in. It's just a beautiful composition. Yeah. I could see a still life painting of that. Yeah. And, you know, maybe I should be doing one. But I, yeah, so I find it just exhilarating when I see that stuff. It's Ma interesting also the person who did that will probably not, uh, <coughs> it was not building an artwork, to put it that way. That's right. So there's a little bit of an unconsciousness about that, that we maybe we're all doing things that looked at by somebody else, there's beauty in it. Hugely so. I think so. That's Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Have you got time for a few more? Yeah. Yeah. More, yeah. And oh, oh, <laughs> well, oh. we see flower shots everywhere and they're always beautifully lit and elegant and artistic. And then your neighbours throw their, what are these? I never even know the name of the plant. Rhododendrons, rhododendrons, hydrangeas, hydrangeas. They throw their hydrangeas in the recycling bin, and they just look a picture, don't they? Stunning. So yeah, when yeah. I looked and my, I noticed I had two emotions. One was oh how sweet, and then I thought oh 
The hope just, and the, so look, at the, look at the quality of them. They are not even, they've not even wilted yet. But, you know, hey, it makes a photo for no, me. Beautiful. Yeah. And you walk past office windows every day That's and gorgeous. blinds every day. But suddenly you've got a, 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 an artistic, sort of an almost artistic statement there. Yeah. And, and it's just those zigzags that would have, would have hit me. I didn't yeah. look for it. It just yeah. hits me yes. or, or just touches me is probably yes. a better word, yes. touches me. Yeah. And I go, right, I'm going to yes. respond. I'm going to respond and do the mechanical thing now, get my camera out and take a photograph. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things people often say in different ways have said today is this sense of there's non-randomness in the randomness. There's a sense of organization, there's a sense of uh, elegance, sense of poise. That is a sense that it means something, and and you know people can scoff and say, well, you know, you're just making up that meaning. My view is you're always making up the meaning. Always. The question mm. is which dots are you, you know, which dots sure. are you going to join? Absolutely. Let's look at a couple no, more. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got yeah. Time. And if not, go take some. So, ah, look at that. Yeah, someone had an accident and bashed the pole over, and suddenly there's a symmetry with the street. That's all it is, and I found it amusing and quirky. So we get a photograph yeah. of it. It, again, there's beauty and there's disruption. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's human life. You know, there's, a, there's, there's us being human. And I've got a few, I think, in a row of us being human. And anybody who's got children and has been in an airport, probably, uh, this probably resonates with them. Um, so, yeah, we're standing around in a queue. The plane's been delayed. And there's a human reaction. And what I get uh, from that is everyone would really like to do what she's doing. Yeah. But one person yeah. is doing money, yeah. one person that's right. is that's looking right. at them. Yeah. I'm doing yeah. my hands. And, she, and, make, yeah. and then, there's, then, there's, then there's a lady yeah. just looking at That's right. Person. That's right. And we've all got a queue behind me. Really and I love it that the girl is both comfortable and sulking. Yeah. <laughs> I love your work. She's right? in it's comfort. Fantastic. I really do. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And then just a person on a bus. We're on the bus, we're on our commute, we're on our whatever the whole time. And suddenly someone does this tiny little thing because they're on the phone yeah. and they need to hold it. I mean, I'm very lucky with, on that journey with the light. Yeah. It's worked beautifully for me. Yeah. But I just, you know, I just, I just, it makes me really um, celebrate life. And do people <clears throat> mind that you take a picture? Uh, well, I don't ask because in this country we're allowed not to ask. Right. There are some countries you have to get permission, right. but we don't right. have to. And also I'm going to back myself and say, look, I'm celebrating life. Yes. There are a load of artists, photographers novelists who condemn the world. Yeah. There's plenty of that around. Yeah. I think there are fewer of us who celebrate it because we're less recognized, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. It's less, funny enough, it's probably got less monetary value to celebrate life than to condemn it, That's weirdly, in the art world. I don't know for sure, That's but we'll see. Yeah, that is a thought. Well, I think you've landed this in a really interesting place because, oh, look. See, just the pub and the, this, this lovely girl, Tony, in our local pub has to carry her pen somewhere. <laughs> that's, and that's where she carries it, especially in COVID with the mask. She probably couldn't put it in the mouth, you know, in her mouth where it might have. Yeah. So that's just great fun. Let's let's keep going. Thank you. And you know, I don't know why that I I went for that, but I just love the absence absence of hands. You know, it's cold. I mean, the you know yeah. the, the drink was probably cold when she was drinking it. I just found it charming, really. It's just. I fun. love that you don't know why you did it. It's also great. Yeah, it just it just makes it. There's something that stirs in me that just goes, that's lovely, and the texture of the of the wool is yeah. so soft. Really. And it seems to yeah. me, for me, the texture also goes up the Guinness glass. Uh, yes, it does. Well, nice one. And I like you know just completely incidental. That little blue frame yes. behind the Guinness yes. glass yes. is a lovely counterpoint to the pink. Yes. Do you don't yeah. need your Life, the universe, whatever, gave that. me a, a, a composition. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Next. <laughs> and sometimes you know, uh, life gives you a complete gift because that was an advertisement for uh, an exhibition in the National Gallery. And in the real painting, he is looking at the heavens and the angels are looking down at him. But we have a tube station in London called Angel Islington and they just call it Angel. And so he's looking up, and um, I just, you know, thought the, the word instead of the, the angels is great. Yeah, great fun. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. I mean, credit to the hedge cutter here. But, yeah. you know, did they, do they think they've made a sort of almost an artistic object, a sculpture? I don't know. I hope they do, because I think it's fabulously, yeah, really, really lovely and fun. 
Next one, please. And um, just the contrast in shadows here. You know, the, the recognizable tree on the wall on our right and the, and the ground, but at the distance, that slanty, long, long shadows yeah. is a lovely contrast. It's just, that's a life moment. You walk behind the National Gallery in London on, a, on the, in, in an afternoon, sort of 4 p.m., and that's what you'll get on a sunny day. And you can just celebrate it as you walk through. It just makes that moment, that, that 20 yards, 20 meters, perfect. Amazing. Thank you. And uh, I mean, I always think of being on a train is one of the most lovely meditative experiences, being able to just look out of the window. Um, and then I glanced at the window, we'd just come out from behind all those trees on the right, and the dark blue sky showed the white neon lights in the train itself. And I saw clouds and blue and stuff. Yeah. Okay, and last one. This is a foggy day on Clapham Common, and the sun is trying to get through this thin mist above it. And there's a goalpost in the distance, and it's just. I want that one. <laughs> yeah. I want Thank all you. The there we go. Beautiful. All done. So beautiful, so poetic. So, Alan Burl. Thank you so much. Alan, you also guys, I think might do a walk with us this afternoon. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. 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 Maybe we'll see some of the yeah. shots that you took. I might be distracted after. by my camera rather than the, the philosophy yeah. of the walk, so but we'll see how we go. Philosophy. We'll be distracted. <laughs> yeah. We love it. Thank Great stuff. So Thank you, David. Alan Burr. Love it. So lovely to be here. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, stay around, have some delicious Thank food, and, and, and see, see what lovely shots the world sends to you. Thank you so much. That's great.